Okay, so now we're back up and running. Okay, so module seven recording. Um, looking over various aspects of how we find and determine how to help our students with either emotional and behavioral or scholastic stuff. Um, the program at my school is MTSS, which right now we're in the implementation stage. We're still figuring out, we're still figuring out how to run the plastic thing. Um, we're, we're doing the testing and everything else, but about once or twice a month, we have all sorts of wonderful people in business suits show up like the men in black telling us how to put post-it notes on boards and tell us where to level our kids. Um, one of the things that I actually think is kind of weird about my school is we've partially implemented MTSS um, because we had done an RTI structure with mathematics before I came. And so they had a lot of the infrastructure pre-built, just not necessarily using MTSS terms and not having the, the breadth that MTSS uh, calls for. And so it's been actually very interesting to hear the success stories of a program we haven't officially actually brought into our school yet. <laughs> Um, so I'm not real sure how that officially works, but we have, uh, we have success stories. Um, the thing that is hardest for me about MTSS from this side of the river, so to speak, is it is really, really difficult to get a solid answer on a, like, you'll ask a yes or no question and you get a five page document referencing the question with very little definition to the question you asked. Um, very political in that, in that way. Um, which of course I'm, you know, I'm stressed out. I'm teaching four grades. I, I, I want a yes or no. I need to know how I can fix this today, not worry about the next meeting that now I'm also taking on other people's classes to watch their kids because they're in a meeting to learn how to do this. Um, so I love the idea of MTSS. I really think that it's a smart and intelligent concept. I don't know that it's, I don't know that my school is going about implementing it correctly. It feels like it's a very complicated system that needs someone who is dedicated to it specifically to help guide others through it until either the school culture is so well ingrained with it that it becomes second nature or <coughs> to fill in those blank spots that are going to occur where it's like, okay, they're in this gray area between this and this. So how do we interpret the data? Well, that takes research. That takes time. That takes effort. And right now we have the two that are leading the charge are, well, the three that are leading the charge. Uh, two of them teach mathematics. One of them teaches mathematics is chemistry and uh, physical sciences. She also is the head of two clubs at the school. Um, the one that teaches mathematics is also involved in coaching, is also involved in three committees, including accreditation. And the third is my peer um, from the middle school that teaches English. And he teaches middle school English. He is a coach for basketball. He is an assistant coach for two other sports. He does PE, and he's also the head of their uh, audiovisual classes so they have all the free time in the world to do the research and everything else so there are a lot of questions that just don't have an answer so i right now i look at mtss and they're like we want it done and ready to go by spring i'm looking at it and i'm thinking it's three years easily as far as its full implementation and getting it properly ingrained and it's because we don't have enough budget to pay for someone to cover it. 
and looking. Does yours, yeah. Sorry. Does, does yours include behavior as well? Does yes. It encompass? Yes. Okay. Yeah, um, it's because while we have a counselor, she is very, very focused on college prep and planning and everything else. She doesn't have any other. We're lucky to have her full time at our school. But with that, we lose any secondary options that she may have. So a lot of the counseling aspects are kind of left to the teachers. And I so think even even with your counselors, though, those behavior supports still end up taking, I mean, they're, the counselor can only do so much. Yes, you know, absolutely. What's in a regular classroom when you have a regular behavior problem. Absolutely. And it, <coughs> it's definitely been, that's one of the reasons why I like it so much is as good as our employee culture is there's a lot of hey do you need help with this what what can i help you with you know like it's a very wholesome atmosphere for lack of a better term the student body is a fairly negative environment like entire classes are just like look this is pointless i i'm i'm stupid this is stupid you're stupid stupid you know, I, think, they, I see that as like a general thing in all of schools now is kids like just apathy levels to do anything extra is it's so hot like it's and or yeah it's so hot not not existent it's, it's well, prevalent yeah and, and it it's like i was apathetic in school i think a certain amount of apathy comes from you know i don't know why i will use geometry in the real world oh turns out that i want to yeah I want to cut this piece of board and I need to fix this wall. Crap, that's measuring. Oh God, my my theorems are coming back like PTSD. <laughs> um, like, like there's definitely, the, and, but ironically, it, it's very funny. I have this weird relationship with the kids because of the fact that I'm doing all of this to be there versus some of the teachers that took the job because they wanted to stay in town. And so it was the job available. Um, I went to college to become a teacher so that I would have an income in town, that kind of thing. Yeah. They seem to respect me a little bit more because I fought, like I drive 53 miles every day to come in and see them. I'm there before the rest of their teachers half the time I am, you know, I stay behind, I do extra and all of this. And they're like, why? Because I want to, if I didn't want to, I wouldn't be here doing it. Yeah. But it challenges them is because for the first time in a while, I think that, I mean, they're actually seeing a culture of, Oh, we matter to him. Um, but looking at the, uh, sorry, rabbit hole. I do that a lot. <laughs> um, looking at the MTSS stuff, it's it's hard to see some of the light at the end of the tunnel just because of how new we are to trying to put it into place and how much how many questions are still on the table after all these months of meetings and trainings and like I have a curriculum to teach remedial reading. I don't know how to use it. I don't even know what kids officially are going to be in my class for it. And but we've that done, would be that would be used for students who tested low. Right. And right. were fitting into one of those other tiers. You would then teach that. Right, reveal. exactly. And using um, we're using FastBridge. Uh, okay, using Fast the yeah, using, Do you also use FastBridge, Mallory? Do you know? No, we use Map Data and oh, I've heard of that one. I know at our high school, it's just this year that they started using the fast bridge testing and the teachers like it. I, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> we, we have one-to-one -one Chromebooks in the high school. So everything being on the Chromebook and taken care of from an exterior source is very, very helpful to us at this level. Mm. Um, I, I like it quite fine. Um, it, there's, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of garbage content to it. Where it's like, okay, we're testing your morphology. Mm -hmm. Go. 
like there's not 20 minutes of explaining what is morphology and let's build you up. It's, can you do this? No. Okay. Here's an easier one. You can do that one. Okay. So you're in between these two. Let's mm-hmm. do one in between these two. It, it feels logical, which I hate to say it, but in education is sometimes lacking. Yeah. So I've taken up too much time. Go. So, uh, <laughs> well, I have been where you were at Thomas with the whole, like we're three years out of trying to implement MTSS and trying to have, um, like su- success with it because I was like my old school district. That's where we were at. I taught eighth grade math last year. Um, and we had an RTI class, which is response to intervention class. And, um, they wanted it to look like MTSS. Like they were trying to move that direction. Um, but like the RTI class itself had no curriculum attached to it, had, it was not data driven. It was a hundred percent, um, teacher recommendation. So like there were so many like flaws in the fact of like how it was even like the, like the idea itself was great, but it wasn't executed at all. And really what it was like, RTI was like just an extra study hall, which is not what an intervention course right. is or an MTSS course is or like MTSS. So like I spent all of last year, even knowing like at this point in time last year that I was leaving because I had my job that I have now lined up. Uh-huh. That I spent all of last year trying to, you know, we like did a bunch of research and found a curriculum and tried to do those things to like get on that path. But even then like leaving, I was just like, they're they're three years out like at least three years away from being able to find something that's going to work because they have to like not only come up with a curriculum but they also had to um get all the teachers on board about actually you know looking at data and like picking kids that way versus just being like you know because it was a small school. It was just like, well, this yeah. kid, his sister was really good at math. So he's going to be good at math too, which is so much. Obviously. So yeah. Much I mean, that's, that's just science. Is what I know. Is. And so, and that's the thing. Like I had, like I was looking at my advanced eighth grade math kids who were like in my advanced course who were going to like, you know, so at eighth grade, basically they pick you out, but you're going to be taking calculus by your senior year is what it ideally looks like. And I'm looking at these kids and I have a ki- I have a couple kids in my class who are in the 35th percentile of their peers in math. And I'm like, but, but their older siblings were, were good. Were really good. So they got picked because their siblings were good or they're good students and they actually do what they're supposed to do, which, you know, in math only carries for so long. Like you can, right. only, you can only get by on your work ethic for math for so long. Exactly. Well, that's one yeah, of the like, things I was I supposed really, to be calculus. I was supposed to be in calculus my senior year. I was in like, I don't even know what math. Yeah, is just it's hard. hard. And like, I, like I'm one of those weirdos. I love math and I have a math degree and I still eventually got to a point in college where my work ethic was not enough to keep me going. Like you have, you yeah. get to a point and, and it's different for everybody. And so you, ha- especially in eighth grade, that's a big thing. So I understand the struggle of the three years and being that like that three year range of like, it's a great idea. And I'm glad we're implementing now, but it really is going to take this long. And so now going from that situation to where I'm at now and um, my school has been an MTSS school for, for five or six years now like licensed by the state has all the mtss and credit accredite accredite accreditation accreditation yeah. uh all that kind of stuff and so i'm getting in on that back end where all that like front work has been done and it's been really nice and so i teach uh like a tier two intervention course and so um it's a i it's my math three is what it's called that's uh-huh. more like algebra two so I'm a lot of juniors and um it's those lower end tier two intervention kids juniors right. who just need more time more support and so instead of we have a rolling block and instead of having math every other day like most kids they actually have it every day with me so they right. i have spent every day with them this is why I need a Thanksgiving break. I've spent every day with them <laughs> since 
God August bless the math teachers. For now. 80 minutes, 80 minutes a day. I was like, so you're like an hour, hour and a half block schedule, but it's every, every day. Every day with these kids. Oh. And these are, these are That's tough intensive. Kids. Yeah. And so like my one class and it's like, there's, there's flaws that we're still working through with scheduling. Like I have 24 in one of my classes and that's not an, an, an intervention. No, that's, 24 kids that's is a not, class. That's, that's nine IEPs in there. I have three additional behaviors in there. So half of my class is IEP based or behavior based. And those are just that alone. And then I have 12 additional who are low and have always struggled with math. And I'm trying to fix things as juniors that they missed as a fifth grader or a sixth right. grader or a seventh grader. And so right. they can't, they can't do the advanced algebra because yeah. they don't know fractions well. Yeah. Because they cannot do fractions and or I'll say like, what about, you know, just little things. And like, what is this? If, if this is my distance from here to here and I want to find my distance, I have this distance here and I want to find my total distance. What am I going right. to do? And they right. look at me like I spoke a foreign language. And so it's, it's, it's great in the fact that we have it and it has right. helped so much. And it's not like my school has done fantastic. And that this past year, we've actually added like a math strategies class, which is a oh, nice. three intervention class. And so in the next few years, we really will see a better like those gaps that strategies class looks at Closing those gaps up. That they missed in their fifth grade, their sixth grade, their seventh grade, those things that they missed <clears> so that <throat> they can do the math that we need them to do in their sophomore year, junior year, senior year. Well, and that's, that's one of the things that I like most about the MTSS process so far is um, there's really not it, from English for English. Yeah. There is not a consistent curriculum. They gave me curriculum books, but they were all that thick. That's the student edition. That's yeah. For each year. And it's like, no. You can get through no, it. You cannot. No. There's no that, way. That, and and I'd rather lick sandpaper. I read <laughs> the freshman one. You're gonna you're teaching kids to hate everything that has to do with the written word. Can we not do that for yeah. a year? And that's probably, um, that's, that's half the battle. Those kids, those tier two kids that I have, they had a bad math teacher when they were young. Done. So they've hated it and, and they just, just checked out. So like well, most of what I'm doing is like, if I can get you by the end of the year to be like, you know, math isn't that bad. Like this isn't terrible. Like I can kind of get through this. Like that's all I want. Like that's all I'm trying to get through. And that's what that's so great about the fact that we have, we've identified those kids Properly, like we have those systems in right. place, we place them properly. The the next step we have is getting the class sizes and like getting, which is always a problem. Like everybody has too many people in a class. Like, like that's just how it is. And, and I don't. Well, One of my classes is nine, and I got the entire grade. Oh, I'm jealous. Yeah, I have 26, 26, 24. And 14. Those are my class sizes. Not a single grade in the entire town breaks 20. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. So <laughs> like Mallory, you have like a middle school that feeds into your high school primarily. Yes. Yeah. So are they, do they have the same MTSS program that you guys are doing? That way you can kind of limit the amount of kids that are in tiers two and three when they get to yes, high school. And so they have really honed in on that the past two or three years. So I know a lot more about the middle school because my mom's the middle school principal. So I know plenty about their implementation process. And so she took over about three years ago there. And so their math department, they really, um, they've added those intervention courses, not quite as intensive at the high school level yeah. um, because we have so much more flexibility at the high school level with being able to schedule things like that versus the middle school level. And so, but they've, they have something, they have something called like Viking time. And so every day kids have an, an enrichment or an, um, what am I looking for? Intervention time. So like if you're a kid that doesn't need any interventions in English or math or behaviors, then you get into those enrichments. And those enrichments are anything from, they did like a fantasy football one, there, oh, cool. just tons of different things, like so many different cool things. And they're um, like broken up into like nine week segments. Or if you don't meet that, you can be into like an intervention course, which is like your math or your English or those other behavior things that you can go into. And you spend those 
30 minutes a day working on those things instead. So that has also, hopefully in the next couple of years, we see a big improvement with that as well. And that's at the middle school. Yeah, that's at the middle school. So and we have seventh and, eighth, seventh and eighth graders at the middle school and the ninth through 12th at the high school. Okay. And that's they're able to choose idea. then at the middle school, which like if they need an inter intervention, whether it's reading or... Yeah. So if they have an intervention, they kind of get placed. And okay. then if they haven't been chose for that, then they kind of get to choose their enrichment, which is really great. Okay. But also even those kids that get have to have an intervention, there's four nine week sections. Like they have it built right. in. They also get an enrichment as well. So they're not okay. constantly in an, in an intervention where like all their buddies are in some kind of fun. Yeah. Right, right. It's doing like let me add my one plus one thing. Like right. how to add ones to things. So <laughs> so how about you, Anna? Um, so my district uses MTSS. Um, I know that there's a testing component to it that is done throughout the district. I don't know what they used at the elementary last year. I know that this is the first year that they've used Fast Bridge at the middle school and high school and that people really like it. Um, I know, you know, the goal is early intervention so that things don't get so out of control that, you know, you need that peer <clears throat> speed. Um, and so the testing is a way to, you know, figure that out. What I don't know is how the support system works. Like at the elementary school, I don't know if that's just sitting out with a para and working extra or, you know, like what level of support is there. I know that every day the whole district at the elementary level incorporated a time I, and I think they called it tier time. I think that's what it was called. I don't know how it was di like divided up, but tier time was basically a 30 minute time period within the day where the entire school um, did like reading activities, extra support and reading. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know if it was leveled to feed into this. I do know, I mean, I believe it was part of, you know, this is additional help that the students need, but I don't know how they divided it up. Um, we had a program called SIT, and are any of you familiar with SIT? I've heard of SIT before, yeah. Okay. I have not. So SIT is what I participated in the most, and it had to do more with behaviors. So if there was a student who was struggling with behaviors, they'd also typically be struggling with academics. It was that combination, which is like what the MTSS system is trying to address, that combination of needing behavior support, uh, support and academic support. And so what it was is that there are meetings. I mean, still I get emails about meetings. I haven't been invited to be in on any of them this year at the middle school. But basically they um, take down data about how the student is functioning in classes, like what kinds of behaviors are happening and how it's affecting them and their classmates. And it's qu quite a uh, process. Um, it involves, you know, like scoring data for those behaviors and coming up with a system. I feel almost like they need a behavioralist to create the, the charts <laughs> because if you don't score the data right, then they make you right. do it all over again. So you could spend a month, you know, checking off boxes for the student only to be set, told that, you know, this isn't the data that we actually need. Bring us something else. <laughs> we, we, we didn't give you the right box. <laughs> yeah, I, I worked for a center, you know, for people with disabilities where this was a regular part of my job was that somebody who specialized in behaviors, you know, created a plan for these people. And my job was to, you know, as I worked with them the day, you know, score how they did in each of their target areas. But, you know, as a professional who was creating that, I was just checking the boxes here. It's right. Years. You don't get a whole lot of instruction on how to do that sort of like what data is needed, but you're expected to come up with the actual method of taking the data and what data is needed. That's the teacher's job. And that was really frustrating for me last year because it caused oh, a yeah. few students that I had to be problematic for a really long time because it took so long, like almost the entire year, you know, like in April, finally, somebody was like, oh, hey, this kid's wearing shoes in your classroom. You're right. He does. He does need some interventions. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> Could have told, told you that. Thank you for, for tuning in. Yeah. So anyway, that was the behavior part. Um, at the high school, I, I don't know if it's just a matter of like what you have, you know, students getting placed into classes that will give them the additional support. I'm assuming that they have something like that at the high school so that when they get those fast bridge test scores, the students are able to be placed in classrooms that will help them more. Um, 
in my own classroom, you know, as I was reading about this, it specifically targets math and reading and behaviors. That's what the MTSS right. hands of the website is. Those three things. Um, in my classroom, I started doing some assessments. I had my students do, it wasn't a playing test at the end of their concert after they'd already performed. I had them do what I called uh, like a performance progress record. And I just had them record a part of the performance that I thought they would know well. And then I evaluated that I scored it, you know, based on a whole series of tone and intonation right. and everything. And then came up with the scores for all of my students to see who were the lowest on there. So I could determine who I was going to need to give more materials to because those top students are going to be, you know, bored with the music that I have. If it's right. that easy for them and they're exceeding the expectation, I need to make sure I give them more. The students who are way at the bottom, you know, getting like a one. That they need more really, time. They need something. And, you know, I have limited resources. I don't have a system set up in place for me where I can, you know, have somebody work with my students. It's just me and, you know, 40 kids in a classroom, 45, something like this. So you see my ability to actually intervene. And it's not, you know, it's not as important as reading and math, maybe. I mean, or maybe it is, but... So, you know. <laughs> so for those I mean, kids, it's like important it's a break and it's something that needs yeah. to everyone has their own well and everything it's else. It's important to feel that success that you can. I hate it when I know that the students are capable yeah. and they just need that little extra time that you could give them, but you don't have that time to give you them. Don't have and it. Feeling like they can't do it and that feeling of like, well, I'm just no good at this. They can't do it and you weren't willing to help them yeah. yeah where it's like no i couldn't help you and yeah. you can do this and how do i now prove that to you so right now i'm kind of working on figuring out what things i can do to help them how can i address it like can i send some of the more advanced students can i pair up an advanced student with a less advanced student to have them work together um which right. would be beneficial for both of them do i have the space to do something like that can i do some of the like uh, video recording lessons. I think we've all seen those, like where the teachers are recording a video and there's like extra links they can click on if they yep. can help with this thing. You know, like, maybe I could do something like that and send them away and just tell them to, you know, work with my YouTube creation. But anyway, that's how this information has informed my classroom and my experience outside of my classroom with it. And how about you, Patrick? Right so on. Up. So, I know our middle school does two different things. So they do MTSS just like you guys all do. The basic testing, they have a 30 minute period at the end of every day where they go to their, I think they're on nine week rotation. So basically you cut the semester in half, like quarterly, every quarter they switch to a different class based on how they tested. Um, and like I said, it's every day. So I don't really know that whole month, like much about it. I don't get involved in it because I teach PE. And so I don't have to do it, but I know they also have what's called zap, which is zeros aren't permitted, which I think is more of a behaviorally based one. So if you turn in that something makes sense. or you don't turn something in, it's not, it's not allowed. You have to go after school <laughs> until you get it done. I like and that. So kids that basically are just trying to, they just don't turn stuff in because they don't care. It's, it's right. Not the kids it's are an, forced to go. Which is crazy. That. It's yeah. an effort thing. By the way. Which kids are perfectly fine. Just not turning stuff in like, well, I have a C. As long as I don't fail, I'm good. And that's like some of the kids' mentality, and it blows my mind. So they're required to go after school. I worked hard to make that assignment. You need to do it. Yeah. Like, kids work Kids work harder to come up with an excuse than they do to actually do the – like, it's just do it, and you don't have to worry about it. I, mean, I have so many kids failing my classes. Not so many. I have a handful of kids failing my class, and it is designed – that if you show up and you do your work, you'll pass my class. You have to try to not pass my class. Like it's I have I have three awesome. sophomores that we did a series of short essays to look at MLA. I've gotten one out of the nine <laughs> between those three. I've gotten one. One. It's crazy. Jeez. One of them and and two of them are so. One of them tested outside of high school, beyond college level, capable of reading and writing. He's in special ed because he refuses to touch things, literally touch things. 
he will not touch papers that you put in front of him. Like I, I have kids in a PE class that have a C. <laughs> like they just refuse. I didn't to fail PE. I like to sit. How do I you fit? Like kids sure. either refuse to bring clothes because they don't want to do anything, which I know exactly. They either have clothes or you know, or they be like, I don't feel good. No, you don't. You feel fine. You're just lazy. Like yeah. it. It's just like it's PE guys. All you got, you literally have to just show up and do stuff. Yeah. Right which I hold my kids to a really high standard. And so I usually get irritated when they're being lazy anyway, but that's besides the point when you don't even participate at all. Yeah. But, and then, okay, so that's our middle school. So basically don't be lazy and do your work or you have to come after school and hang out with teachers longer than you want to. Yeah. Um, at our high school level, we don't have MTSS or any of that type of stuff. Um, I don't think we do any behavioral intervention when it comes to grades at all, actually. Um, the one thing we do do, it's called RISE, and I don't honestly know what it stands for, but it's every Wednesday, our schedule is shortened every day, so basically it's it's one class period shorter, mm -hmm. and so our classes uh -huh. are 36 minutes instead of 46 minutes. Right. And after lunch, we have RISE, so you go there for 30 minutes, and it's based upon your grade, so you're grouped with, I think I have 15 kids in my RISE class. And every, there's no curriculum. It's not really that organized. They just come up with a different rise lesson plan every week for different grades. So sometimes okay. four grades might be the same. And sometimes freshman, sophomore, or junior, senior, they all have something different they're doing. But like two weeks ago, interesting. it was obviously Halloween or whatever. And it's three weeks ago. And so we went and made pumpkins with the elementary school kids. Okay. That was a rise activity that we did. Whereas... Before. Is it like a social emotional curriculum I, I mean, rather I than it. a? I guess I don't. Okay. But then, then huh. is there anything like where you talk about like self-efficacy? Yeah. So, the, so, so I get there is a purpose to it. I mean, but sometimes it's just like they're just trying to fill days in for. Yeah. You know, sorry, they shut the lights off on me. Um, <laughs> they're just trying to like fill days in because they ran out of stuff to do. And, right. And then other times, you know, it's really beneficial. And so I'm like, it, I mean, it just kind of depends. Whereas like, and like sometimes seniors will be doing their FAFSA stuff or college applications. Mm -hmm. And, you know, freshmen might be talking about, like we had the American Heart Association and talking about jeweling and doing all that type of stuff. Oh, so that, yeah. that, we do a lot of stuff like that. Like it's just, okay. like, I just wish sometimes they would, you know, not make it so much fluff and just fill the time in. And Is I it wish, new or have they been doing it for a while? I want to say it's like three years they've been doing it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the teachers hate it because yeah. it's kind of like, like they just throw stuff together last minute. Yeah. But I was like, if we could bring in like, you know, some guest speakers or do something more productive with it sometimes. More directed at least. Yeah. Like every week plan it out and have something really good instead of yeah. half of the week. Yeah, otherwise why waste your, you know, your content yeah. time if it's just going to be. <clears throat> like one yeah. week was yeah, really, you... like we have, I had seniors and last week it was grade checks. And so we had to go through and check people's report cards. And like I said, one kid had a C, a D, and a D. And I was like, all right, what are you going to do? He's like, well, I'm, I'm still going to graduate. It's fine. And I'm like, all right, that took two minutes. What are you going to do with the next 30 minutes? Like, yeah. Cool. Uh, that's and like different. I mean, it's, I think it could be really beneficial if like we did it with a purpose, but yeah. So it's behavioral intervention. And then it's like the individual plan of study part is we do job shadows with it, or we have mm -hmm. career fairs and we do all that. Mm -hmm. So it's a multi purpose thing that we do I think our high school does something similar they have like an opportunity period and some days the students yeah. are locked in like every Wednesday they're locked in on that period mm -hmm. and they do the things that you're talking about and I think the teachers feel kind of the same way like yeah. sometimes it's good and other times it's just really disorganized very and so, yeah. but so we have we have something called it's called career life planning which seminar advisory everything you want to right. call it. and it's every, we have it every day it's like 35 or 40 minutes every day and it just got built into our schedule this year and so okay. we do our social emotional lessons every tuesday and we were actually given like i want to say before september like the yeah. entire year like our counselors had mapped out like you're doing this this day this this like so at least like we were so i understand she had an idea of like it's thrown together last minute versus like our counselors were like 
here you go. This is what you're doing literally every Tuesday for the rest of the school year. And yeah, they need to like sell that on teachers say teachers to the other yeah. districts. <laughs> yeah. And it's like they ours, really might, should. ours might have it planned out, but they don't send out the email until like yeah. And so like thirty I minutes before I have a download. Well, I mean, it's, it's right a few now. days. I could before, pull it up and be like what I'm gonna do Tuesday after we get back <laughs> and see like what lesson we're going to cover. <clears throat> Just so yeah. nice in the fact that like, yeah. I'll pull it up right now and we'll see here. Let's I mean, see. it would be super nice and they might, they just don't share it all with us at once. But like, right. doing, like our school's doing build your own curriculum right now. Oh, so yeah. every teacher's having to go through and do one class at a time and do all your lessons and all this stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you're having to align with your, like the middle schools, having, like your core right. subjects you're meeting with the high school and they're aligning it, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. Six restructuring yeah so they're doing oh. all that right now too so yeah so i'm looking at mine so like when i get back on the third mine is going to be understanding the teenage brain and so there's oh, some time where it's like oh, i'm right like but we actually have like a uh-huh. curriculum for our social emotional so like i can go in like log in and it has like powerpoints and like everything like, oh all. nice so yeah. It's really cool. yeah and it's and we'll very structured and the fact that like I could make it last the entire 40 minutes if it's really good or it could be, you know, it's not very good. So we're just going to have a very quick conversation about it because I'm doing my job. You guys are doing your job. We're going to talk five minutes about it and we're going to move on. But right. Right. we're done. It's time. <laughs> time to do something good. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, and we'll do that and we'll watch different motivational videos. And mm-hmm. I mean, 99% of the kids don't take it serious. They just text or yeah. laugh or do something like kids don't take things serious. No, it's like a super serious topic. Like it's suicide prevention month or something or watching a video and it's the and jokes. Take, yeah. They don't take it. And I don't, yeah. yeah they're, I mean, the, the videos are cheesy, but you still got to be able to focus and like get something out of it instead of just blowing yeah. it off completely. I know. But we were all like that once I assume. So. I know. <laughs> well, know. it, the thing I take away from all of our conversations is, um, Kids are weird, and they are difficult, and there are way too many things that we are trying to balance. Yeah. Um, with all, with so many of us using some element of NTSS or having seen it being applied, at least, I, it, it actually kind of heartens me a little bit mm-hmm. because if it's consistent, where it becomes a school to school. So it becomes system wide. Then it becomes a, okay. Like then the parents know the students know it's not a big thing. It becomes much simpler to implement and find the material versus this seek and you shall find kind of mentality that school districts have been doing. So I, I, while I'm currently very unimpressed by the implementation of it, I, I do really like the idea and I There's really love the, exactly. Yeah. There's, There's light a at the end huge of the amount of I'll potential. Tell you that. Yeah. And the data aspect of it alone, I consider to be fairly valuable. It's because at least then there is proof of an idea and a direction you can take. Like, yeah. okay, you don't know how to do, use silent E. You don't know how to get a polynomial going. <laughs> okay. So let's, you need to go that direction because you're not remedial. Like you need to learn about silent. E. Go versus, okay, everybody is now in a remedial classroom where you're just working on homework, which is currently what they kind of do every week on Wednesday. You stay late after school and work on your homework. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you well, if you didn't understand it, to, if you didn't understand it to begin with, that extra hour is not doing a lot for you. Yeah. And I'm not going to be trying to teach you biology. I love biology. I test very well in biology. I have not studied biology. Yeah. So, but, no. so when does the state like come in and say, okay, this is going to be like a one of the core standards is like every school in the state is going to implement like some sort of MTSS thing. Like, so it's a consistent basis across. The, is that a thing that the state would do? I think it is. Like, yeah. it, it could get there. MPSS website. But um, yeah. I would say that they're probably closer to getting there. They may not necessarily dictate who you purchase for your data network. 
-hmm. where the testing and things like that, like some may go fast bridge, some may do the, um, mm -hmm. what but was the- there is a support system in place. We use map. Yeah, right. Just, so just like on a broad oh, yep. spectrum, everybody, everybody's doing some sort of this mm -hmm. multi-tiered yeah, thing. I think where so. Just right. like that yeah. emotional aspect that we're all supposed to be incorporating. Yeah, there's some, there's some elements, there's some spinal cord, so to speak, um, but everyone is kind of adapting it to their specific needs in the mm -hmm. school. And then as those needs are being met, fleshing it out into the whole concept, you know? So like with ours, it's very, ironically, we're trying to fill in the potholes that exist from fifth grade and earlier for the reading, but it's also the emotional aspect of, I can't do it, never been able to do it. So what? Yeah. And that's why you're doing it. That's why, we, yes, you can. And we now have data that proves you can and stop it. <laughs> I outlawed the word can't in my class. You can't, you cannot say the word can't. I will, I, you have to, I'll send you outside and run laps or something. Like you, you can't say Mine the word. Mine is I'm stupid. I'm That's like, another oh, Don't tell me you're stupid. Oh, I, I, I got on a big on soapbox a just this week over that one. <laughs> Especially over one kid. I'm pretty sure if he got out of his own way, he could be close to genius level. Yeah. And he's got a C right now. And it's like, dude, I get it. You want to be a farmer. Just be a good farmer. That, like, <laughs> don't, don't, don't hamstring yourself just because you think boots are the only way that footwear should exist. <laughs> like, I get it. I'm wearing, I'm, I'm wearing slip-ons that insult you somehow. But t trust me. On this but I think we'll call it there guys um, it was a great conversation I, yeah, I really was. I'm I'm really surprised at how varied it is because I mean when you're on your own little bubble it's kind of hard to tell what's happening outside of it mm -hmm. um, but thank you Mallory for the amazing light at the end of the tunnel talk Go earlier. I needed there. that in a big Go way. Get there, I promise. I, it's so great. It really is. The, like, the discussion board was not pretty to the point that other people were like, please. <laughs> like I got a few responses direct, like teacher sliding into my DMs talking about, hey, don't give up on MTSS yet. And I'm like, I'm not. I just, I'm mad at it. It's mad. It's hard. Trust well, me. Well, and it's I did the discussion hard. board the same day that they had just had another meeting and I was like, so what was discussed <laughs> today? Like and they're like, like what do you mean? What did we discuss? <laughs> oh, okay. You were all fired up, weren't you? <laughs> oh, I was. Whew. <sighs> Zen moment. Think about happy thoughts. Right. So, <laughs> thank you guys very much. I will. Um,